You are watching Area DMG. Welcome back to Area DMG. I'm your host, Philip Wesley, the Mile High Mouth, and today we're going to take a look at Tiny Barbarian from Nicholas and Star Quail Games. Let's see. Oh, they start you out automatically playing the game. Here's our um, attack button. You're on this little area here where you're just being attacked by things. There's actually a uh, mode of this where the idea is to see how well you'd get through. You can um, you just have your sword and little um, special moves from things. Bam! Let's just check it out. Oh. You can like flex and hit kill things. But yeah, interesting little uh, survival mechanic. The basic idea is to see if you can do a better score. Oh my gosh, that thing's huge. How do I kill that? I don't think I've even run into that in the game. Anyways, when you die, the tile screen shows up. Tiny Barbarian DX. I may need to um, change the options a little bit. Music volume down. Okay, I put music volume down at 60, so you should be able to hear me a little bit more. 40? 30? I don't know. Mm, I can hear it through my uh, headphones. Sound volume seems okay. Mm hmm. Hmm. Auto grab on. Okay, display maps, go back. Versus the Horde is that mode that you saw near the beginning. The adventure mode is what I'm currently playing through. You can play uh, in first in single player or second player. And it's divided into different uh, chapters. All the heroes is... Hmm. Let's see, we have Threat from Beyond, Sister Challenge, Ruins of Xanadu, and the Serpent Lord. Undefeated. I haven't done any of that stuff yet. Hmm. Let's see what's in the Hall of Heroes. Here are named these heroes and giants you made possible this world. Oh, sweet! This is the credits. But you can kind of like go through them. Read this. It's pretty funny, if you ask me. This is a pretty um, innovative way to do this. I wonder if there's anybody know that worked on this. Oh yay, the, uh, there is in fact rumble. I was wondering a little bit like that, because it didn't seem like it was like activating in this game, so I was a little concerned about that. Might have been because I had the, uh, I had my Pro Controller plugged in at the time. Oh, anyways, I've only played a little bit so far. I'm about maybe a third or halfway halfway through the um, first episode, essentially. One thing I find interesting is that there's not really a game over sequence in this. There's a if you die, you just um, end up. Uh, starting over again from a small checkpoint. There's some pretty decent checkpoints and most of the gameplay just seems to be kind of like hack and slash metroidvania style sort of, but without real exploration without really upgrading your abilities. It, it kind of makes me think a little bit of like a uh, like a magician lord or some of those. Okay. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here, so I'm hoping there's some kind of uh, ending sequence. Hmm. I like that it's pretty funny out here. Like, for example, instead of um, instead of going up like this, like I can slide down these, or if I just hit up and just keep hitting this button because I've got the auto jump up there, I do this weird little fast travel. Let's see what's down here. Okay. <laughs> Cenobite James Cameron, what? Huh. 
I don't know precisely what I'm supposed to do in this area. I don't think there's anything I can actually do, actually. Maybe, uh... Hmm. I'll just keep following these down. Hey, Big Giant Circles, isn't that like a, uh, person from, um... OC Remix? Because that person sounds familiar. I swear that person's from OC Remix. Which, by the way, you should definitely check out. OC Remix is pretty cool. Zero John. Anyways, if I were on that, I would totally check that out. Like, to see if I can find myself. But I'm gonna go back to where I am in the Serpent Lord and show you a little bit of the gameplay in Tiny Barbarian DX. There's only really one safe space. So after you get past this Ghost and Goblin style uh, opening sequence. Yeah! Well, this game is. find things, kill things, and, uh. Sadly, there's no wall climbing. I would love wall climbing. <laughs> Little flexing is pretty fantastic. There's a combo system. Um, the first time I saw this area here, it was full of a... Uh... Well, I'm not going to spoil it. I'm actually not too deep in the game. I'm not too far in the game. And not too, like... Close to the, I'm so, I would say about halfway through this first area here. I don't really have an opinion on this one yet because I haven't beaten like that first area there. But I've already beaten some great little bosses. Um, I, this is already a quality game. The, I haven't gotten to try out the co-op yet. But it's there, it exists, and um, it seems interesting. Ooh, there we go. Oh, you can use your sword to um, deflect stuff back at the enemies. Oh, I want these. Okay. Come here, bad guys. No. No. That's not good. Unfortunately, I don't have a thing to, uh... Oh no. Nope, I, I died. When you die, you start over and you lose a little bit of points. But there's a pretty decent checkpointing system, so... It'll be fine. Essentially... Beating this game is more or less that you will at some point. It's just like what your, your final score ends up being and uh, how long it actually takes you is kind of up to you. The um, There's a combo system, different various moves you can do. Overall, not bad. Love the art style. It makes me think of like... Um, Action older PC game. That's what this reminds me of. It reminds me of like a uh, a Jazz Jackrabbit type thing or um, early PC games like the early Duke Nukem stuff. Not the 3D thing, but back when Duke Nukem was kind of a Commander Keen type thing, but a little bit uh, cruder. Oops. But yeah, it's also kind of tough, which helps it quite a bit. This game were easy. It's a bit easier than, say, like, Volgar the Viking or something, or other games with, uh... Oh, um, I love how this game starts with, uh, essentially a, uh, Conan the Barbarian style thing. So if you're a fan of, of Conan the Barbarian, uh, why aren't you playing Tiny Barbarians? Tiny Barbarian DX, yeah. Ah! It's bad. I'm just doing badly. Ah! Oh, stop hitting me with your stupid venom! Hmm, swamp. I, I stomped that thing. That's okay. The big thing is learning to deflect. That is a secret up to long life in this game. Um. 
some of the bosses are pretty good. Like, there's a boss that I, I beat that um, required me to, like, hit stuff back at him. A lot of this, um, you have to be a little strategic. Once you figure out the weakness for a boss, because, like, the bosses are pretty great, um, you'll have to figure that out. Yeah. Combo system's okay. Enemies take a lot of hits. And the game is pretty tough. But like I said, there, there doesn't seem to be any real game over state. At least not that I've run into. So it uses that to just be unforgiving if it needs if it can be. It forces you to get hit. Which is fine. You know, if you're going to uh uh, part of um, fairness or accessibility is uh, if you're going to have a hard game, make your checkpoints easy. That way people aren't just like... Like, that was one thing that was kind of a problem with a lot of early NES stuff. Um, you'd end up with like, well, I got to the end here and then I have to do this huge long sequence. And it's unfair and then you die. And then you start all the way at the beginning of the game. Which is actually just bad design. Um, a lot, that, I think that's because a lot of those games weren't actually intended to be uh, finished. They were intended to like try and... It was kind of that whole arcade thing where they try and take, court, take your quarters from you. But modern game design allows you to, um, to continue. And so you need good checkpointing and good life systems. This doesn't have a life system, but it does have a good checkpointing system. And... Um, that's what I like about this. It works. I think that the co-op mode would be kind of interesting going through some of these levels, especially with some of these bosses. You could have, like, it, one of the last bosses I beat, rather I beat up, um, I had to avoid, like, the enemies he would summon and then shoot, like, bom the, um, hit his bombs back at him. In a co-op mode, I could have one person handle the enemies while one person concentrates on hitting bombs and stuff back at the boss. That might be a good idea. That like this that two player dynamic might change the way the game plays a bit. I haven't really um oh that that will I noticed there's a time limit. There's a time thing. So uh yeah. It's uh it is taking care of that. So this is probably something for um I guess this can be speedrun. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Cause like if you can actually just avoid a lot of the enemies not worry about them. Yeah, see, they can't get me. I don't have to deal with them. I could, but I really don't have to. Oh, yay. Let's see what else there is around here. Hmm. Well, I guess just that one item. When you beat the little set piece areas, it's it is pretty satisfying to beat those because you're like, oh, I beat that finally. I'm moving on. No, I will get through this eventually. Yeah, let's not ah, let's not deal with these guys, cause you don't get life from uh, beating enemies. You don't get items from them for the most part. Hmm. I wish I could kill those hands, but I can't. It would be nice. It's a good little game though if you're like trying to um, if you have if if you've got some. If you got friend for co-op, good, good stuff. But yeah, let's see. That's probably a coin. There we go. We're out from that. <laughs> Roller snakes, or these things. Well, I think they'll probably bring those up on us a lot, right? Yeah, that's 
that's what I thought. Yeah, stop. No, go away. Took it out. But now I've got like. Um. Whoops. Or at least you don't start me back at that other spot. I mean, yeah, some of these little se sections are pretty tough, but they are beatable. And you will get better. You will survive longer. I'm a better barbarian. No, go away. There you go. Okay. Die. I do wish there were a little bit better health dispersion, but eh, it's it's manageable. No. Yeah. One. Ah, uh, got one hit left. That'll uh, kill it. No, I died. But yeah, you get kind of the point of this game, right? It's tough. And that's fine. I wonder if you can add people while you're playing, like, the one single player into a co op. But yeah, I do want to try the co op for this. It seems like it'd be pretty fun. Kinda arcadey, which is good. I love the little art style for it. it. Makes me think of like, um, well, it makes me think of stuff like Cave Story or early in, um, Commodore 64 games. Which reminds me, if anybody ever wants to do a remake of Night Shift from Lucas Arts, that would be amazing. That one has pretty great little uh, um, pixel art. That leap that that thing does makes me think of uh, Slime Song for some reason. Which is also a pretty great game. Oh yeah, I can't hit those poison back at those. But yeah, this is um, Tiny Barbarian DX. Thank you for uh, taking a little bit of time to take a look at it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of it. And yeah, I know. I will get better at the game as we go along. And it's recording it, so, um, yeah, it, it's letting me know how terrible I am at this game so far. But to be perfectly honest, I had not played this on anything else, and, um, I'm glad to have it on the go here with the, uh, Switch. But yeah, um, let me know in the comments below what you think of the game. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe button and that share button if you haven't already. And make sure you ring that little bell if you hit the subscribe button so that you are notified whenever we have a brand new video here on Area DMG. And until the next video comes out on Area DMG, you are now caught up.